morning, good morning. This is Minister Neil Mayer Newman once again coming to you from City Dead Church of God, 4626 Tronwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016, where Darius Miller is a pastor, and I'm the Sunday School Superintendent. And I'll be bringing a lesson this morning. Before we go to the lesson, let's acknowledge God, most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father. Come before you this morning with a heart of thanks and praise. So great and so thankful this morning, dear Lord, that you let me see another day. Dear Lord, I had another opportunity to say thank you. And Lord, I had another opportunity to praise you, Lord. So let us praise your holy name this morning. Let's thank you again for everything. Dear Lord, and, and I ask you just to, uh, to give me my will and knowledge and understanding of, of your word this morning, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I ask you just continue to bless my family now. Bless their health, their household, their family, they going out and coming in. Bless me and my health this morning. Bless my family members, my household, my going out and coming in. Oh, Lord, I ask you to bless the church family this morning. Bless their health, their household, and their family members, they going out and coming in. Bless the pastor and first lady the same. Bless them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, dear Lord, that they'll be able to, to go on with what you have put on their plate. Dear Lord, and I'm just so grateful and thankful this morning for everything. Dear Lord, I ask you for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word, Lord, and, and I ask you to bless the teacher this morning. Dear Lord, and I pray when it's all said and done, somehow we'll get something out of this lesson to change their life forever. Now, Lord, just be with me. In Jesus' name, I ask you. Amen. Okay. This here is John. This is Jew. August 27, 2023. And uh, before we get into the lesson, we're going to go and see what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be looking at what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 about the goal of trajectory of Jesus' king, God's kingdom. Jesus Christ had conquered death and we and will also, and we also will conquer death by his power. With the final Enemy declared, defeated in our life. All things will be under God's authority. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. God being all in all. And God is all in all. And like I said, this week 13 of our Sunday school lesson, August 27, 2023. What, top, what is our study about today? People frankly question the order of power in their world. The first letter to the Corinthians, Paul, uh, Corinthians declared that through the death of and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all creation is ultimately subject to, to God. And God is all in all. You know, God tried to relate to the Israelites on what he was telling them, but they ultimately didn't believe it. So God had to send his son down on this earth to put things in order. Go up, on that, go up on that cross and die for our sins and the sins of the world. To show us what God was talking about was true. But Jesus had to come and make things right. Now, what I, my, what I was studying about today all will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 to 28. Let's look at our background and see what our background, background is relating to. Our background, the Christians. In Corinth, came, came from a wide society, social and economic spectrum. The Euro Roman world of, or the Hellenistic culture surrounding them, and were full of different ideas about the nature and reality and the divinity and the purpose of human existence. Greeks throughout thought this separated body, separate bodies and soul, teaching that the body was merely a temporary shell, but the soul was immortal. Paul teaching of the resurrection of the body is, is a clear example of what, of his effort to speak to the Corinthians. Christians speak to me about the doctrine of the resurrection. Paul insisted that our physical human body will participate in the life to come. Although it, in a new and unexpected way, 
the resurrection of Christ is and is an example. So we see it was different. People just sat talking about how the body was 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 it is say that the Corinthians thought it was just a temporary shell. But the soul was immortal. The Paul teaching the resurrection of the body is a clear example of his effort to speak to the Corinthians. Corinthians Christians. And he and Paul insisted that our physical body would play would participate in the life to come. Although it would be a new expected unexpected way. So let's get into our lesson and see what our lesson is referring to this morning. How they how Paul is talking more about it. Christ, the first root. Look at verse 1. In Corinthians 15 and 20. Corinthians 15 and 20. Paul, but the Christians, had indeed been raised from the dead, the first root of those who had fallen asleep. Okay. Let's see what that was talking about. It is clear from reading the Old Testament that God's people at that time had a limited view of eternal life. Even though the word of those individuals who seemed to express some hope in the resurrection. Job, Job in Job 1, 19, 25 to 27, and David in Psalm 1, 16, 9 through 10 can be understood in somewhat ambiguous fashion. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees believed in a believed and taught about the hope of the resurrection. In today's passage, Paul states fairly that Christ has indeed been raised from the dead and that he is the first root of the rest and the rest of us who have fallen asleep are dead. In other words, Jesus was the first one to conquer death. And he had made it possible for us to do so as well. So when he hung out, went out on that cross, died on that cross, lay in the grave, in the grave three days, and early that, that Sunday morning, Christ, God raised him from the dead. He walked out on resurrection ground. So he had conquered death. He had all power from heaven and earth in his hand. He holds the key to death. The Jews had increasingly came to believe that that the longer expected Messiah was signed was signed the arrival of the kingdom of God by res resurrection of the first fruit death and general resurrection of all those who had died in previous generations. Some Jewish Christians had had questions for the much Successes could be placed on the resurrection of the one individual. Jesus Christ says, says one person come back to life does not make a general resurrection. And Corinthians from Corinthians from Gentile background may have been convinced by Paul early preaching, since they had so much expectation as those held by Jewish converts. Paul's word seems to have been directed to the Jews dollarly. They need to hear how the, the, the rising of one person, integration, the resurrection of Paul's plan of God. We might say that Christ raised from the, raised from the grave was a down payment on what we eventually Events that happen to for all those who have died in the Lord. I mean, that's true. It's a down payment on us. Because all the ones that died in Christ, they, they're going to be raised from the dead. So you see, you got to give it up. So however they die, going to give it up. So we see here now that how, how the, the, the people had different point of views on it. Christ being raised from the dead. 
So let's look at our next segment and see what's going on over here. Chapter of Corinthians 15, 21 through 25. He is risen. You know, I like to stay with these scriptures because these scriptures are going to lay out everything that we need to know. Everything we need to know. I don't want to put, elaborate too much outside of what these scriptures are saying. I don't want anybody saying that. Well, he, you know, he, he's saying this, he's saying that. I'm going to stay with the scriptures. And if you don't do that, if you don't want to do that, then you know, I'll give you the description of when I finish, before I finish. He is risen. Look at verse 21. Coming from chapter, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21 to 25. Look at 25. For since death came through the man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. But as in Adam, all died. So in Christ, all will be made alive. But each, in turn, Christ the first fruit, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come. When his hand, when he hands the kingdom of God, when he hands over the, the kingdom of God to the Father, as he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he, for he might reign until he put all the enemies under his feet. And see, that's what he said. God gave, uh, Gave this to Christ a long time ago. In fact, Christ came here to do what he had to do for us. Forgive us all our sin. Go up on yonder's cross and hang on that cross and die. He put it in the grave. Through, and, and on the third day, God reigned upon the dead. Jesus is in control of, of, of our destiny now. But Jesus got to do something. He got to put Satan in his place. He's going to bring Satan back up. And Satan going to reign for a while. Jesus is going to put him back in his place and all of his followers are going to go right with him into the furnace, the fire, the lake of fire. And we're going to see as we go on when Christ has completed everything, he's going to turn it back over to God. And God's going to be all in all. There ain't going to be nothing else. God's going to be all and all. So let's Let's look at our, uh, our, our so let's look at our commentary here and see what it's saying. Look at verse 21, 22. Using one of the contrasts of which <clears throat> he was found, Paul set Adam over against Christ. He was sinner of the first man. We are creatures marked for death. Because of what Adam done. He said, We are creatures marked for death. When we become descendants of Jesus Christ, we are creatures marked for life. Adam stands for humanity running away from God. Christ stands for humanity restoring to, restoring to God. He restoring all us back to God. Because we have got so far straight away from God. He's going to bring us all back to God. Christ's resurrection will be, will bring about the eventually the resurrection of all believers who have died before he returned from heaven. One science factor shows that the impossible is possible after all. Look at verse 23. What Paul is saying, Paul continues to affirm the order of God's resurrection plan. Christ was first. He was the first from the dead. He has returned to the Father. But when he comes back, then those who belong to him will also be resurrected from the dead. Because it said, Christ stands for humanity to restore them back to God. 
Look at verse 24 and 25. The return of Christ and the resurrection of his followers will be the beginning of the end of life as it has previously been. Using up or ushering up into eternity. Jesus in our region of the kingdom of God when he first came, Luke 17, 20 and 21, and his work on our behalf will be complete as he returns. When he has completed, destroyed the dominion over the enemy and authority over the power that's once held over God's children, at that point, nothing will stand between the Savior and the eternal eternity in the presence of God. God's going to be all in all. There ain't going to be nothing there. They say God is all and all. So it takes up. So let's look at our next second here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 26 through 28. All in all. And all in all. That's when Jesus is going to complete everything he had and put the devil in and all of his followers into that fiery burning pit. God going to be all in all. He's going to turn it back to God. And it's God going to be all and all. Ain't going to be nothing else. God's going to be all and all. Let's look at our next segment here. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 26 through 28. All in all. Here we go. Let's look at verse 26. It says, The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under his feet, it is clear that this does not include God himself. Who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under his feet, so that God may be all in all. So he said, Christ now for do something. He gives up all our sin. Go up on that cross and make sure it's all sufficient. God going to raise him from the dead on the third day. He's going to walk out on resurrection ground with all power in his hand. He holds that key to death. And if we see what we're reading now, he holds the key to death. He was the first one. He said, when, when he come back, all the ones that is dead in him are going to rise again, going to be raised from the dead. He holds that key. <laughs> But right now he got other things to do. He said, he said he when he had completely destroyed the dimension of the enemy and the authority and the power, death once held <coughs> over God's cheering. He said at that point nothing will be will stand between the Savior and the and eternity in the presence of God. God's going to be all in all. When I'm saying all in all, he's going to be all. There ain't going to be nothing there. And he's going to be all. There ain't going to be nothing there. Let's read verse 28 again. That when he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to, to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. Let's look at our commentary and see just what that is relating to. Look at verse 26. The power of the enemy. And isn't that this good? He's going to clean up everything. He's going to put everything in perspective. It says so that when 
So when he had done this, then his son himself will be made subject to him. He's going to be made subject to God who put everything on his feet so that God may be all in all. Christ could have done what he had came here to do. He came here to show all the Israelites what God has been telling them all the time. It was accurate. But Christ had, God had to send his only begotten son down here to prove it. What he had been saying was subject all the time. Christ had to come here and go out on yonder cross and die on that cross. Put in the grave for three days, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. He walked out on yonder you know, resurrection ground. So I got all power in heaven and earth in my hand. I hold the keys of death. And that's what he was saying now. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it now when it says that nothing has been put under his feet, it is clear that this does not include God. Himself and put everything under Christ. Is that when he has done this? Then the son himself will be subject to God. That's right. When Christ did all this and took care of all of him, then he's going to be subject to God. They're going to be turning everything back over to God. And God's going to be all in all. And I say all, nothing else, and all, nothing else. God's going to be all in all. That's all it's going to be. Because the seemingly powers of death and the separation it brings make the sense of grief and loss, especially, especially pain. Painful. What a glorious day when this when when this enemy is finally destroyed. It says what it says. The seemingly final of death and the separation it brings makes the sense of grief and loss, especially painful. When a glorious day, when it when this enemy is finally destroyed. Look at verse 27 28. When we understand the Trinity as God existing. As three is one. Because God going to be all in all. That's what I'm saying. God going to be all in all. See, while, while we understand the Trinity as God existing as three in one. Paul's word here emphasizes the otherness of Christ at least with respect to his role in providing eternal life, it was the plan of God to put everything on the Christ. So he gave, he gave the, Jesus all the authority. Come here. Saying, look at all. My family background is going to be reading this. He gave him all the power to come here and put all this stuff in perspective. Show the Israelites what God had been talking about all the time, that it was true. Free us from all fears, from all our sins. Go up on that cross and die upon the cross. And right now, if you don't have a church home, you can come to Shady Day. That address is, and I'll give you the address when we get through. But you can come to shade that. Then you don't have to come to shade that. As long as you become, could go somewhere. If you believe that, um, that Christ, God sent His only begotten Son down on this earth to die for our sins and the sins of the world, go out of there on that cross on Golgotha, give His life, be put in a grave for 
three days, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. If you believe this in your heart, that God raised his son from the dead on the third day, then you can be saved. You become part of God's family. Yeah, see, if you go have a church home, you go to, you come to Shady Dance, 4626 Trump was for you to protect 77016. Come over and pay us a visit. It says, once, once Christ returned, and death is forever banished. Then the work of Christ will be complete. And God's plan will have come to a friction. At this point, God will be all in all. Nothing else. Nobody else. Once Christ completes his stuff, he's going to be subject back to God again. And all they're going to be then is God. He's going to be all in all. His original plan, now listen at this here. His original plan for his resurrection, for his creation, will be restored. It'll be put back like it was before it fall into God and evil. Like the first plan was before this happened. It's all going to be come back to that same point. It's at this point, God will be all in all. His original plan for his creation will be restored. Will no more sin? Hallelujah. No more death. Praise God. Every person and every part of creation will be forever served and glorified. God. When we read that again, at this point, God will be all in all. His original plan will be restored. We don't know how his original plan was supposed to be, but we'll see it. His original creation will be restored. His original creation will be restored with no more death. Praise God. No more sins. Hallelujah. Every person will, and every part of creation will be forever served and glorified God. God will be all in all. Once Christ finishes up when he everything he do, when he complete everything, everything. He gonna put back on be on the service of God again. God going to be all in all. Ain't going to be nothing else. God going to be all. Ain't going to be nothing else. And God going to be all. That's all it's going to be. Praise God for what he, how he had spearheaded that. How he gave everything to Christ. Christ had to come down here and make everything right for us. True, the other life what God was saying all the time. It was true. They didn't believe it. But Christ had to come in the picture and show them what God was talking about all the time. Meantime, he, he, come to, he came to, to free us from our bondage of sin. I see a game went out on the Young's cross on Go Gotham. Died on the cross for our sins and the sins of the world. Stayed in the grave three days. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. He walked out on resurrection ground. So he got all power in his hand. In heaven and on earth. He holds the key to death. And you see what we've been reading? Christ holds the key to death. When Christ died, we died with him. And when Christ comes back again, all of us are going to be this. Be raised from the dead. I guess that will be the second fruit. Raised from the dead. And when all this, Jesus Christ had completed everything he had to do, when he had put the enemy, when he had to say, oh, what they say, they say, and his work on our behalf will be completed. 
at his return. When he had completed, com completely destroyed the dominion over the, over the enemy. I mean, he put Salem back in his place and put him back in, the, in that fire burning pit. And all the rest of it, his father was with him. And the authority and power that once held over his children. And say at that point, nothing will stand between the saved and eternity in the presence of God. Christ came down and do something. He did it. When John baptized Christ. White dove came down in Christ. Your God said, "This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased." Christ, He came down to do what His, what his Father sent Him down here to do. He didn't come down here and make no wave and party for Himself. He came down to do what His Father said. What His Father sent Him down here to do. He was the Word. And he done just what his father, and that's what we need to be doing. We need to be doing what Christ, what Christ presented to us. We need to be doing what he helped laid out for us to do. Go out on the utmost part of the world and make disciples. Bring, go out and get the lost sheep and bring them to the, to, back to the pole. This is what we need to be doing. You know, I like to always say about redeeming our time. We need to be redeeming our time. For the days are evil. And like I say, all this that we just got through here, all this based on love, on nothing else but love. Trying to show us how we need to get things right. Because there's going to be a break the other one of these days. He's going to get all the sheep on the right hand and all the ghosts on the left hand. And when it's all said and done, all the ghosts, go, go, the evil people going out into in eternal darkness into a blaze, blazing furnace. Some scripture says. So we need to be out about our father's business, having one another. If somebody down, have them up. Let them up there with you. Show them love. If they hungry, give them something to eat. If they thirsty, give them something to drink. He made a command we got to love our enemy as well. Because so we fail to love our enemy, we disobey God's commandments. And we can't become part of the family of God when we are not following God's word. God's word. He should love the enemy as well. Help it. If he's hungry, give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. You know, do something we got to turn the other cheek. That's what he say, turn the other cheek. See, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Paul said, when you set Christ as your, as your personal Savior and start walking with Christ, things just begin to get worse for you. There's consequences there. Even death. So we need to be about our Father's business. I'll make a disciple, bring the sheep back to the fold. Sometime I don't know if we'll get some of the things that happened back in the old Bible day, but the way things are now, you get out there presenting yourself as a father of Christ, it, you could be subject to this. But God got ways of putting his word out. You always got a ram in the bush. The technology he got now, what we can use a shade of there. We put it out there. Put it on YouTube, somebody can read it. Somebody can listen at this here. We think I thank God right now for, for technology. 
If somebody can hear that Sunday school lesson that God is presenting this morning. And like I say, if you, if you can't stay up with me, you always go to the Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22, 28, and read it for yourself. And see what says the Lord. So I hope you got some out this lesson this morning. I pray that you you uh, bring your family and show them what says the Lord, what the Lord God had put on the YouTube. Bring your friends over. You should tell them where to go to YouTube. Tell you that church of God, and you see YouTube on it. And get these lessons. Get the uh, morning service. And I pray that you'll get some out of this, this, this Sunday school lesson, and you did. Then, like I said, present it to somebody else so they can see how God prepared all this here. How he sent his son down on this earth. I say again, to show the old really like people how things are done. And that what the prophets was relating to him is true. He already know he's gonna have to send his son down on this earth. Take care of business, turn everything over to him. And when he get everything all done, and all everything is all said and done, he's gonna turn it back over to the father. And he's gonna be a substitute back to his father. And his father has said that uh, once Christ returned and death is forever banished vanished. Then the work of Christ will be complete. And God's plan will be will have will have come to friction. Friction. And at this point God will be all in all. He's gonna be everything. He's gonna be everything. All in all. And his original plan well, his creation will be restored. When no more sin, praise God. No more death, hallelujah. Every person and every part of creation will be forever served and glorified God. Tell somebody else about this, this Sunday school lesson all in all. When it all spoiled down to the, and it does settle. Christ, Christ has been completed everything that he's owed to complete. And he's going to be back subject to God. And God going to be all in all. There ain't going to be nothing else but God all in all. Tell somebody else about YouTube. And tell them go on that YouTube and show you your church of God enough for the Sunday school lessons. And then, like I said, you can read it for yourself. Get, get your Bible and, and turn up. Where's Corinthians? 15, chapter 15, verse 22, 28. And read it yourself. Let us pray. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father. Come before you again, dear Lord, with all the thanks and praise. So grateful and thankful, dear Lord, how you spearheaded everything. How you sent your son down on this earth to put everything in right in the right perspective, Lord. So the end of what, what the prophet was trying to tell them about God. It was all true. But Christ had to come down on this earth and show them that what God was trying to say, trying to relate to them, was all true. He had to come down and forgive us all our sins. Not just come down here and say, y'all sins are forgiven. He had to go out on yonder's cross. I don't go God and be nailed to the cross. He had to die for our sins. And the sins of the world give his life. They didn't take his life. He gave it. And oh Lord, I'm so grateful and thankful how you just spirited everything, Lord. Put your word right in front of us this morning so we can read it and, and see how everything you done was wonderful. How you let your son come down and, and do everything he had to do put Satan in his place and throw him back into the, to the, the uh, blaze of fire 
a lake of fire. I'm just so thankful and so grateful this morning, oh Heavenly Father. How you had done, how you got spearheaded and everything. Now you said you wanted your creation, your thing now. At this point, we'll be restored by your written creation. Thank you, King of Everything. Love you, Lord. Give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Because all belong to you. And be with us throughout the rest of this day. For heaven above, and I'll be careful to give you all the honor. All the praise and all the glory. This I ask you in your son Jesus' name. I pray. Amen.